In the spring of 1999, like in so many seasons past, Cedar Point opened with a brand new attraction. A Vacoma Junior Roller Coaster named Woodstock Express. Since the late 1980s, Cedar Fair CEO Dick Kenzel had built up the Point's reputation as a must-visit park for thrill-seekers with frequent record-breaking coaster additions to the company's flagship park. But with this new attraction, Cedar Point fans had begun to wonder if the park had forgotten its identity as America's rock and roller coast, as it had been three years since their last record-breaking ride. Little did they know that just one year later, the park would once again shake the attractions industry to its core with what was without a doubt one of the most ambitious roller coaster designs for its time, one which would in fact spawn an entirely new classification of ride, the Giga Coaster. On May 6, 1989, Cedar Point opened Magnum XL200. Built by Aerodynamics, Magnum was the world's first Piper Coaster, that is, a roller coaster exceeding 200 feet in height. The ride broke several records, at the time of its opening being the tallest coaster in the world at 205 feet, the fastest, reaching a top speed of 72 miles per hour, and the steepest complete circuit roller coaster. The new ride drew huge crowds, and Cedar Point set a record for attendance that season. The success of Magnum XL200 is often cited as the reason for Cedar Point's change in direction, with former park VP and general manager John Hildebrandt having this to say. We all were smart enough to know we had something. Big Steel made a big difference, and with Magnum, we started branding ourselves as a big-time roller coaster park. Magnum XL200 would win many awards and accolades for the park, including being named the best steel roller coaster by Amusement Today's Golden Ticket Awards three consecutive years, from 1998 until 2000. This emphasis on large, record-breaking thrill rides would continue throughout the 1990s, with Cedar Point opening the tallest and fastest wooden coaster, Mean Streak, in 1991, the longest, tallest, and fastest inverted coaster, Raptor, in 1994, and the tallest, fastest, and longest stand-up coaster when Manus opened in 1996. But Cedar Point wasn't alone in its desire to produce record-breaking attractions. In 1996, Fuji Q Highland in Yamanashi, Japan opened Fujiyama, setting a new record for world's tallest roller coaster at 259 feet. When it came time to start planning for what would come in the 2000 season, Cedar Fair looked to recapture the records they had held when Magnum debuted in 1989. What Dick Kinzel wanted was a ride that would surpass Magnum, but would carry the same genetic code. Steel structure, tubular steel track, no inversions, high capacity, world-class stats, highest, steepest, fastest. In November of 1998, a new coaster was pitched to the Cedar Fair board. Cedar Point would once again be doing something that hadn't been done before. They didn't want to just break the current record, they wanted to smash it entirely by building the world's first 300-foot-tall roller coaster. Though they would later go on to install three Giga Coasters for Cedar Fair, Swiss manufacturer Bolliger and Mabillard wasn't considered for the project, as they were known more for coasters with inversions and were already booked to open six new installations for the 2000 season. So, consideration came down to just two contenders to build the new attraction. D.H. Morgan Manufacturing, run by Dana Morgan, son of Aero Development co-founder Ed Morgan, was first to bid on the project. Morgan had already worked with Cedar Fair successfully in the past, installing three hyper coasters, Mamba at Worlds of Fun, Wild Thing at Valley Fair, and Steel Force at Dorney Park. But in the end, it would be Swiss manufacturer Intamin Amusements who would place the winning bid. It was basically a done deal, and then Intamin came in and dramatically underbid us. They did that by shortening the ride compared to what we were going to give them, and they just built a ride that had way too much energy coming into the station and just put a bunch of brakes in to scrub it off. And I had no desire to do that. But you know, they weren't like bitter about it or anything. According to Dick Kinzel, however, it wasn't just the lower bid that won Intamin in the contract, although we can be sure it didn't hurt, as the difference in price was several million dollars, according to Morgan. But also at play here were major engineering challenges for which Intamin appeared to have better solutions. Perhaps most important was the lift hill. 
Magnum XL200 uses a traditional chain lift to pull its trains up the hill and takes a whopping 90 seconds to get to the top. To use a system like this on a 300 plus foot coaster would take significantly longer, having a dramatic effect on the ride's capacity. D.H. Morgan suggested a lift utilizing two chains instead of one. However, Intamin had a more novel solution, the cable lift. In place of chain, the cable lift uses mostly wire rope or a cable loop, which is then attached to a short section of chain which engages the train's chain hook. As a result of being much lighter than a traditional chain lift, the system is able to move the ride vehicles much faster. This would allow the proposed coaster to pull trains up the 310-foot lift hill in just over 20 seconds, greatly increasing the ride's theory theoretical capacity. In addition, the lift hill angle was able to be built steeper and therefore took up less space. Cable lifts are also quieter and require less maintenance than a traditional chain. Also at issue was the problem of designing wheels that could withstand the kind of day-to-day -day punishment a coaster of this magnitude could dish out. Monty Jasper, then VP of Construction and Maintenance of Cedar Fair, and Sandor Kernax of Intamin were able to solve this problem by creating a new compound for the wheels, making them more durable. Beginning in 1998, rumors began to circulate among fans of the park about something big coming to Cedar Point. Speculation included a 10-inversion roller coaster built by B&M and an aerodynamics megalooper. A coaster built by D.H. Morgan was also part of the rumor mill, interestingly enough. Then, on July 2nd of 1999, Cedar Fair Entertainment Company filed a trademark for the name Millennium Force, further fueling speculation that something big would be coming to the park. Around a week later, track pieces began appearing at Cedar Point, and astute coaster enthusiasts were able to confirm a ride manufactured by Intamin would be installed. On July 22nd, 1999, just a couple of weeks later, Millennium Force was officially announced as the tallest roller coaster in the world. Legendary roller coaster designer Werner Stengel, along with input from Cedar Point and Intamin, would design the layout of the ride. The hype had hit a fever pitch, with Cedar Point releasing a promo video for the ride that is so 90s it'll make you want to put on a flannel shirt and pop in a VHS of friends listening to Smash Mouth on a Walkman whilst riding a skateboard and making sure everyone knows how little you care. Construction began in August, with the giant wheel, Cedar Point's Ferris wheel, being moved after closing of the park that year. The project took seven months, involving 120 construction workers and project managers, with the lift hill being topped off in January of 2000. After two months of testing, Millennium Force was ready to go. On May 11, 2000, Cedar Point opened Millennium Force to the media and members of coaster enthusiast groups. The new attraction was big news, drawing media from all over the world including this Japanese news crew who came to cover the coaster that broke the height record Fujiyama at Fuji-Q Highland had set four years earlier, vowing that Japan would eventually retake their stolen record. The, the Japanese people are kind of upset about this roller coaster. People in Japan will be coming here and try it, and, and uh, they'll be actually building probably taller one too. As fate would have it, they wouldn't have long to wait. Just two days later, on May 13th, Millennium Force opened to the public. It broke several world records, becoming the tallest and fastest complete circuit roller coaster in the world, towering over the park at 310 feet tall and reaching a top speed of 93 miles per hour. It was also the first to use a cable lift and would be the first of seven, as of the making of this video, Giga Coasters worldwide. It was an instant hit at the park. 
According to Dick Kinzel, so many guests arrived early to ride it that we had to create a holding area just inside the main gate to avoid a crush at the turnstiles. Every morning as the gates opened, hundreds of guests would sprint down the midway to get in line for Millennium Force. Cedar Point staff would stand back and watch what they called the running of the bulls. As it turns out, though, Cedar Point wouldn't have long to enjoy their new records of tallest and fastest. Unbeknownst to Cedar Fair, and apparently that reporter from earlier, Nagashima Spotland in Kiwana, Japan, had been quietly building the world's second giga coaster, Steel Dragon 2000. To build the ride for them, Nagashima contacted none other than American company D.H. Morgan Manufacturing. Dana Morgan had this to say. The Nagashima people had approached us, and we had not really talked much to them because we wanted to build the ride for Cedar Fair. He continues later, They wanted, of course, to be the world's tallest. Well, we knew that Cedar Fair, that their spec had been 300 feet. So we're like, well, we probably ought to build 305 feet. According to Morgan, the offices of D.H. Morgan had obtained a poster of Millennium Force, proclaiming it as the tallest and fastest coaster in the world, to which they added just two words. This week. Steel Dragon 2000 opened at Nagashima Spa Land on August 1st, 2000, just a couple short months after Cedar Point opened the first Giga Coaster and became the tallest, longest, and fastest coaster in the world, standing at a height of 318.2 feet and reaching a top speed of 95 miles per hour. To this day, it still holds the record for world's longest coaster with a staggering track length of 8,133.2 feet. Built at a cost of $52 million USD, Steel Dragon 2000 remains one of the most expensive coasters ever built, with much of that money going to extra steel for earthquake protection. According to Morgan, Cedar Fair was quote unquote hot when they learned of this development, but a year later at an industry trade show reportedly told him they wished they had accepted his bid. With Millennium Force being as good of a ride as it is, it really makes you wonder what the ride Morgan had proposed for Cedar Fair back in 98 would have looked like. Though its career as the tallest and fastest was short-lived, Millennium Force remains one of the most popular roller coasters in the world 21 years later, winning Golden Ticket Awards for Best Steel Coaster from 2000 to 2019, never placing lower than second place during that time and getting the top nod for 10 of those years and in 2013 was ranked as the best roller coaster in the United States by Time Magazine. It's not the best ride at Cedar Point anymore, but it's without a doubt one of my favorites. But I want to know what you guys think. Are you a fan of Millie, or is it overrated in your opinion? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this type of content, make sure you subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss anything. And as always, a like rating is very much appreciated. Also, I've put a lot of the material I used for reference down in the description. If you're into this kind of thing, the Dana Morgan quotes were taken from a two-part interview with him by the Season Pass podcast that I highly recommend giving a listen to. Anyway, folks, that all clear means I'm up, up, and out of here. Thanks for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day here on YouTube.